Is League of Legends actually pay to win? No, but kind of, sometimes. Some skins, which cost money, actually give you an unintentional advantage over using the base skin. That went past me, then turn around and hit me. Sure. On the flip side, some skins have been known to give you a disadvantage. Riot Games, the developers of the game, have created a secret list of these skins that they deem to be unfair in professional matches, and specify that pro players can't use them. But there's no one stopping you from playing them in solo queue. Today we'll be taking a look at some of the more interesting cases where skins either provided disadvantages or strange advantages. But you know what's not pay to win? Pearlfessor, the sponsor of today's video. Pearlfessor is a companion app for League of Legends designed to help you play better. The app provides you with everything you need to get one step closer to achieving your ranked goals. From automatically importing the best runes and builds for your champion, an in-game overlay letting you know how your performance is going and where you may need to improve, to jungle timers on the map letting you know exactly when both camps and inhibitors will respawn among a variety of other features like the enemy spell tracker. See an enemy flash, click the flash icon, and now you have a more or less accurate time frame of when they'll have it back. And because people often wonder, yes, Professor is completely safe to use and complies with Riot's terms. So if you're ready to start improving your future games, click the link in the description and download Professor for free today. When League released in 2009, most free-to-play games were entirely pay-to-win. Riot would then pioneer the act of only selling cosmetic skins. So we decided early on that we wouldn't sell power. We didn't want the person with the most money to win the game. People said, oh man, we're giving up assuredly making $100 million on this game in order to try this experiment where we don't know how much we'll make. Obviously today, every single game is powered by skins and not pay to win mechanics. But first I mentioned that Riot made a list of skins that pro players can't use, which is true. However, they do not make this list public, likely due to the fact that players like you and I could go out of our way to take advantage of it. Thankfully though, an ex-coach from the Brazilian league confirmed the existence of such a list and pretty much broke down all the skins which are prohibited. I'll have the list passing on the screen right now, but know that they're not all equal. For example, Steel Legion Lux is banned because her abilities all look too similar and her ult's range is visually misleading, but Elementalist Lux Lux is restricted due to the effects being too demanding on the game. Elementalist Lux is technically 10 different skin models all in one. And although you can only use one at a time, to create a seamless transition, the game loads all 10 versions in the background. Essentially, in a 5v5 game, the game will process 19 different champion models instead of 10. Simply, they don't want to deal with the potential technical difficulties and then the rest of the skins all come down to either visual or audio issues. Ironically, three of the most expensive skins in the game are all on this list, due to their abilities being too difficult to see. Then finally, on this esports list, it includes all skins that are technically impossible to obtain, like King Ramis and Black Alistar. All of those skins are prohibited as most players would likely never have had the opportunity to play against said skins and it'd be very unfamiliar. This list was presented in 2020, so there are likely newly released skins that Riot prohibits from being used that we're not aware of. For example, the Sea Dog Yasuo skin released last year has similar problems to Project Ash, particles that blend in with the map, and a visually smaller hitbox on their main ability. However, some skins provide some unconventional advantages. I only recently learned about this, but Dragon Trainer Heimerdinger is prohibited from professional play due to his Control 2 animation. Here a segment of his skin gets very close to the camera before completing the animation. However, if you just spam the command, it looks like what you're seeing on screen annoying, distracting, and could technically trigger some sort of epilepsy episode. The craziest part is that despite this being discussed online since the release of his skin in 2018, the animation was never changed. And this feature can be all yours for the low price of 1820 RP. I'm kidding, don't do this, it's pretty lame. And among others, there's skins that were so pay to win that Riot had to eventually change them. 
Famously, the zombie Branskin does a quirky zombie walk when it's approaching an enemy. However, for a while it was doing this animation even if the enemy was in a bush and you didn't have vision of said enemy. This is obviously giving you information you shouldn't have and Riot eventually fixed it. I do want to say, these are always interesting facts, but these benefits are very small in the grand scheme of things. If you're losing more games than you win, it's probably not because of overpowered skins. But if you care about these tiny differences, what about the counterpart? Skins that are pay to lose. This can be things like Omega Squad Vagar's W, which gives you an exact indicator of where not to stand or you'll take damage. Thematically this makes sense for the skin, but compared to the regular W, it gives away a bit too much information. And sometimes, the skin effects can be visually confusing to the actual player. What the- I got- This is paid to lose skin. Bro, I literally got scared. That's so cringe. Just recently, Riot received some negative feedback regarding a new Irelia skin priced at 1820 RP. With a high price, you'd expect the highest quality. And they did deliver. But the issue came with players noticing the auto attack animations are a bit out of sync and can cause you to accidentally cancel your auto attacks. The user PlayStation on Reddit made a post breaking everything down and even provided a side by side example. Surprisingly, a Riot employee did respond in the comments. First off, thank you all for raising this issue and contextualizing the impact it's having on your games. While our intention was to ensure Aurelia's auto attacks and VFX for this legendary skin would not be disruptive to gameplay, it's clear that we missed and are prioritizing this as a must-fix issue. Please know we are actively working to correct this and will look to push a fix for this issue ASAP. Now I don't play Aurelia and I don't think the changes were listed in a patch note, so I'm not sure if the changes were made yet but they seem pretty certain about fixing that issue. And you know, it's not the first time Riot makes changes due to the opinion of a popular Reddit post. Just a month ago, the Reddit user SkankHunt25 made a post titled Pay to Win Ward Skins Are Annoying. I think there should be a universal ward outline when sweeping, and included a clip of how he thought Heimerdinger was a ward when sweeping, but in fact, it was Heimerdinger. A wise choice. And this is an easy mistake to make, as some words are oddly shaped and can resemble smaller champions. But literally a month later, Riot completely fixed this problem. Now wards and control wards come up with a unique colored outline. This applies to champion traps as well. And honestly, this is unironically one of the better changes made in the game in the past couple of years. In conclusion, however, no skin is supposed to be pay to win or pay to lose, but accidents happen. Though unlike that Aurelia skin, there are clunky skins that never got fixed. Although the issues are minor, they're technically small nerfs to your character. Regardless, let me know of any skins that I should have mentioned but didn't, and thank you as always for watching, take care.